We're back live at the Coliseum. Big event is coming up, 100 meter final. OJ, I'm reminded so much of the ad. Actually, I don't, I don't think it's much of a surprise that I do <laughs> pick uh, Carl Lewis to win the race, but at 50 meters, I expect Sam Grady to be the first one out of the blocks. He's normally leading there, and if he has any chance of beating Carl Lewis, he's going to have, a, have to have a humongous lead at that point, because Carl is going to start coming on him at, at 70 uh, meters, between 70 and 80, 80 meters. Normally, a healthy Ron Brown would start making a strong move on Grady at this point. It's not that he's going to accelerate on Grady. Grady has a tendency after about 80 yards to be spent, and he's just trying to hold on to his stride at that point. As you know, very few sprinters can accelerate in 100 meters after one after 80 meters. Well, Normally at that point, they're just trying to hold on. So you're predicting an American sweep. The Americans have not swept this since 1912. Again, the last time the U.S. won a gold medal in this was 1968 when Jim Hines did it. What about the possibilities of a Lewis world record right here? He knows this is it. Well, this is it, and I'm sure he wants to get a world record. Uh, he's trying to make his, uh, a step into immortality. Uh, he'd like to do what Jesse Owens did. And of course, we realize Jesse tied or broke records in each one of his four events, uh, the relay team having broke the world record at that time. So uh, I think in the, in the semifinals, he really tried to break the record at that point. The win was right for him. Here, in order for him to get the record, he's going to have to get an exceptional start out of the blocks. Thus far in these uh, in these Olympic Games, he hasn't had a good start. He's gotten out okay in the semifinals, but uh, and he pulled on the field at that point, but he never had the start it's going to take for him to break a world record. There are Jim Hines, 995 at altitude. Bob Hayes in 1964 set at that point what was the Olympic mark, 10 flat. Armin Harry of West Germany at 10-2 back in 60. Tolan and Abrams back in the 32 for Tolan. Abrams, 1924. This is uh, an event in which... For a couple of years now, people have been looking ahead, saying, well, this is where Carl Lewis can win the first of four gold medals, and this would be, in the opinion of many, the one spot where Carl would be most vulnerable. That's a good point, too, as uh, Dwight just mentioned. He is moving in the same direction as the men in the hundreds. So here we go. and he's been quite impressive in every race that he's run uh, in this Olympic uh, game. His parents, Bill and Evelyn Lewis. Probably opposing his, coaches, yeah. high school coaches. Carl with uh, his sister Carol also, who will be in the women's long jump competition. So the moment is at hand, and there's the introduction for him. 90,000 throats roaring in unison. Emma, you're proud of him. Carl Lewis drafted by the Dallas Cowboys and the Chicago Bulls of the basketball NBA. Says he's not going to anyone because the Warriors are his, uh, his fans, I guess, of the Warriors and of the Philadelphia Eagles. On your mark. World mark, 993, set at altitude by Calvin Smith. Olympic mark, 995, altitude, Jim Hines. Lewis is all-time best, 997. Crowd responding to a triple jump attempt, but now all eyes in the Coliseum are focused in one place, right there. Let me tell you something, it will be an upset if the Americans don't sweep this event. They were figured to sweep it. Some great American runners like Calvin Smith, the world record holder, and Mel Latney, the fastest time at sea level, didn't make this team. It figured to be our finest team ever. Brown in one, Grady in five, Lewis in seven, all in red, and we've got a false start. It looks like Ben Johnson out of lane four, Ben Johnson of Canada in lane four of the false start. Well, if, he, one. If, he, if he made any moves, Sam Grady came out of there real fast. Sam Grady has been saying all along that he can beat Carl Lewis. He felt that if he can get out far enough in this event that Carl wouldn't catch him. I wouldn't bet on that, but I expect Grady to make it pretty tough for Carl. Carl is going to have to be deadly serious coming out of the blocks, and uh, I think Carl, to beat Grady in this race, is going to have to go uh, right around 10 flat or maybe even below that mark. The big question, of, once again, is Ron Brown in lane one. He has that problem with his left leg. He hasn't looked good in the quarterfinals or the finals. 
and the man that I think that may challenge him will be Ray Stewart. So it's those four sprinters, Lewis, Grady, Brown, and Stewart, are the guys that we're going to have to watch. On your mark. Again, they're called to the mark. Carl Lewis shaking hands with Ron Brown, who just couldn't get there. That's his parents, Carl Lewis Sr. Carl Lewis doing it. 9.99 with an oversized American flag and 90,000 ringing in his ears on the track right now. So he has his first goal. And he owns the Coliseum at this moment. Carl Lewis. The win was under the allowable, so his time is legal. It's not unofficially, it's not an Olympic record. Let's take a look at him coming out of the block. Here, there he is. Hold it up Lewis. there, Carl. He's savoring the moment. You saw a peek back over his shoulder. He wants to see the replay for it. He wants to see the finish of the race again. There he is looking back. He was looking back at the replay, which in prototypical Lewis fashion, there's, there it is up on the board right now with the folks in the Coliseum are seeing. Close for 50 meters. You call it OJ. Very close. Started a stretch. Saksikan terus Temporak Sports.